Good evening, everyone. It is time for Wednesday night church. We're thankful the Lord has given us the opportunity to, uh, to get these things live streamed uh, so that you'll be able to hear them uh, and the phone system and all of that uh, that makes it possible. Lord willing, here by uh, mid-August, we should be back uh, to everything. We're going to start uh, our Wednesday night ser- or Sunday night services back on August the 2nd, so the first Sunday night of August. We will be back in the building. Uh, We have a special treat uh, that Sunday evening. Uh, Our friends, the Materos, are going to be here. They were scheduled to sing for us in the revival, but with all that being uh, postponed, I was able to reschedule them. So uh, the Matero family will be here that Sunday night uh, singing, and then we'll be out uh, afterwards. Hopefully uh, the weather's good. We're going to be doing a little picnic out there, barbecuing some hamburgers and hot dogs and things like that. And uh, So that'll be a great night of fellowship. Uh, and then, um, you know, we're doing some updates to uh, the uh, other parts of the building so we can get back into Wednesday nights as well. And so keep that in prayer. And let me just say, listen, let's be in prayer, in prayer, in prayer. Uh, about moving forward for the cause of Jesus Christ and to uh, to keep things moving. Also, before we pray tonight, uh, I want to remember uh, Miss Shirley Bankert. You heard the prayer request go out for her uh, yesterday, and so just keep her in prayer as she's having that pacemaker put in. Uh, today, I heard she was feeling much better, so we praise the Lord for that. But just keep her in prayer as she transitions through uh, these next couple days. And then keep Madison and bear in prayer, one of our uh, young ladies that is having some uh, some medical procedures done here soon. Uh, let's keep her in prayer. Also, Miss Dolly Brown, uh, let's continue to remember her pneumonia, that that would clear up. And uh, Brother Tony's dad, uh, Brother Coit Patterson, there in North Carolina, has to have a medical procedure next Wednesday. So let's keep him in prayer. And uh, hey, I just want to say this, praise the Lord for the rain. Uh, we, we have been in a dry spell. I was just talking to some of our farmers out here uh, on Sunday, and we were just talking about the rain. And, uh, you know, I said, hey, let's just keep praying that God will give us the rain that we need. And uh, God gave us some rain uh, uh, the other day, he gave us some today. And so we just praise the Lord uh, for that. And so I uh, thank the Lord that he meets our needs. Church, listen, prayer moves the hand of God. It, it does. It really does. And so when we ask Uh, God will move on our behalf, and so we need to petition the throne of heaven uh, with these prayer requests. Pray for our nation. Pray that God would do a great work in our land and heal our land. I pray that that great repentance would come in our country and that people would see uh, the the horrors of the sin that has been uh, reaping through our land and that uh, they would repent of it. And uh, let's pray that God will do some great work. I know God is on the throne of grace. Uh, He's not moved to that throne of judgment uh, when that comes uh, during that thousand-year reign. Boy, it's going to be a a time then. Listen, God is on that throne of grace, and I thank the Lord for that. So let's continue to pray. Uh, This evening, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Philippians, chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4, and we're going to talk about having peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. I was studying some other things this week that uh, we're going to be preaching here coming Sunday and maybe the next two or three Sundays, and this scripture really just popped out in my heart and mind, and it was a blessing to me, and I, I hope it would be to you tonight. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We ask for your blessing. We ask that you'd speak to our hearts. Lord, draw us ever closer to you and do a work in us, Lord, that we could uh, be a help to you and uh, minister to others. And God, I pray you'd strengthen your people. Lord, we ask that these requests that we've called unto you, you'd do a great and mighty work there. God, I pray you'd work in our land. Bring healing, bring repentance in this land. Lord, we love you. We need you. God, help your people to be the salt and light that we need to be. In your precious name, amen. Let's look at the book of Philippians, chapter number 4 and verse number 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which path all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Here in this passage of Scripture, he mentions the peace of God. He mentions it in verse number 7 when he talks specifically about the peace of God. And then he gives us some things in, in verse number 8. And then at the end of verse number 9, he says, If we do these things, the peace of God shall be with you. Here, Paul is instructing the church at Philippi, uh, who are Christians, who are doing the work of God. They're, they're actually doing a great work for the Lord. Their faith is heard of in all of the land. Paul prays for them continually. And boy, there's a great relationship there with the church and with the missionary Paul. And, and boy, just God is doing some work. But like anything, anytime you're doing something good, the enemy wants to come along with something bad. Uh, not only will he do bad things, uh, but those bad things that are happening in our world, around us and in our life around us and our community around us will oftentimes filter in through our mind and our heart and cause us to think uh, ways that we shouldn't think and then our thinking uh, directly uh, impacts our behavior and the direction of our life and so then we find ourselves doing and thinking and and going places that we probably should not be going and so here's what Paul's doing he's saying look I know it's bad around Around you and I know that it's difficult in the ministry when everybody's coming down on you for what you believe and where you stand and and how you do things and how you don't do things but he says I want you to have the peace of God all around you and so Paul is instructing the Philippian church on how to have this peace and I don't know about you but I don't know of a person in the world that wouldn't want the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ Paul had sent this formula uh, to the church at Rome many years before this. In fact, I want to read you just a couple verses in, in Romans chapter number 5. Whenever Paul was writing to the church uh, that was at Rome and those Christians that were at Rome, this was many years prior to writing to the Philippian church. And so uh, here Paul says in verse number 1, Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul was preaching to the church at Rome who were right there under the very breath of wicked Nero, that, that emperor who wanted to destroy the church and destroy the Christians. They were right there under his breath, under his nose. And, and Paul said that because we are justified by faith, because we are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, that through Christ and through his salvation, we can have peace. Think about that. You're talking to Christians who are being led into the Colosseum to be butchered and to be brutally killed and made a spectacle of. He says you can have peace in that time. And then the Bible says in, in chapter number 6 and verse number 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, peace comes through Jesus Christ and salvation comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible also says in Romans 725 I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin here's what Paul was saying he was saying you know what in my mind sometimes I I, I, I don't do the things I should and my mind gets the best of me and my thinking gets the best of me and I'm not focused on what I should be he says but I thank God that through the Lord Jesus Christ I can keep my mind where it needs to be. And so now Paul had wrote that many years prior, but now he has to put that in practice himself. As he writes to the church at Philippi, he's not in an air-conditioned office somewhere. Uh, he's not sitting by the beach drinking a little uh, drink, having the waves come in and brush against his toes while they're in the sand. I mean, he's not on a mountaintop somewhere on a nice cabin overlooking a lake with his fishing pole. He's in a Roman jail. Uh, he's, he's about to be uh, uh, tortured and, and all kinds of unkind, uh, unkind things happen to him, and yet he still has peace. So what he learned years ago, now he has to put 
into practice in his own life. And church, listen, that is the same with you and I. We, we've been in church our whole lives. Listen, if you've been saved uh, a long time, then you have, you've had more time to learn the truths of God's word that we need right now in this day and hour. If you are a new Christian, uh, then you've just learned some of these things. And it might be harder for you. But here's what Paul was saying. What we learn will help us when we come into a situation, we got to put this stuff into practice. And so he talks about the peace of God. He talks about when the troubles come. Verse number seven, it's not the peace of Buddha. It's not the peace of Allah. It's not the peace of Gishnu or Krishna's or, or any other God. It's the peace of God, the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you think that the peace of God can be disturbed? Do you think that the peace of God can be disturbed by something happening in some galaxy far, far away? Do you think that the peace of God uh, is disturbed when nation rises up against nation? Do you think that, uh, that, that, that God's peace becomes anxious when he hears of trouble that is coming to my life and your life or this situation and that situation as if God didn't know it was coming? As if God didn't already have a plan to how to work that thing out to begin with. My friend, listen, trouble cannot, cannot take God off of course. All of the horrible atrocities that have happened uh, down through the, the history of human, uh, human beings living on this earth, wars and, and all of the famines and all of the genocide and all of the killing and all of the, 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 the political unrest that is in this land. Listen, my friend, God's throne is still solid. Listen, that sea, that glassy sea, that is in front of him is still perfect. It is still at peace. It is still at rest there in the throne room of heaven. My God's not disturbed by what's going on. That's the kind of peace that I want. When Jesus Christ was out there on that boat and the storm hit, guess what? That was the peace that allowed him to sleep during the middle of that storm. It's that kind of peace that you and I need today. What's the formula for this kind of peace? The kind of peace that can face Golgotha. The kind of peace that can face Calvary and all of the torture of the cross. And yet say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And still take time to witness uh, and to, uh, to, witness to Pilate and, and to witness to the thief and, and to give grace and mercy at that time. That's the kind of peace that you and I need. The very first thing, I want to look at just a couple things real quick tonight. How do I get this peace? What's the formula for this peace? Number one, write this down if you're taking notes there at home, which I hope you encourage that you do. Number one, a guarded thought life. A guarded thought life. Look at verse number seven. The Bible says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep, that is to guard, your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He, he keeps your hearts and minds. That word means to guard. Now, in this application and in this, in this context, he's talking uh, actually about uh, like guards that are outside of a prison uh, to, to, to surround, like a garrison would surround you, like David's men had come around him and surrounded him when the enemies attacked. Uh, it, it literally means to, to surround in order to defend. Here's what the Bible says. The peace of God in times of trouble through the Lord Jesus Christ surrounds us and protects us from what the enemy wants to do to destroy us. Man, that's a, that's a wonderful thought tonight. It's a wonderful thought to know that the peace of God can protect me like a military surrounding me. Imagine tonight, if you will, uh, tanks and, and guns and, and infantrymen surrounding uh, myself here up around this pulpit. And, and imagine an enemy trying to come and get me. I would be in the middle of the great protection of the soldiers of my land. And my friend, listen, here's what, here's what the Lord Jesus Christ can do. That peace comes in our lives and guards us. So if I want peace, it must come through the peace giver. It must come from the one who has all peace and is a guarded thought life. I'm kept by the peace of God. The Bible tells us in verse number six, be careful for nothing. But at everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. The word careful is the word anxiety. Anxiety. He says, don't be anxious about everything. Don't let anxiety, uh, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about this? Jesus used this in his first sermon there in Matthew chapter 6 where he says, take no thought for your life. 
take no thought. That, that's the word anxiety. He's using it here. It's the word care. He says, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to put on. What, what, what am I going to drink? How, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Our lives oftentimes are filled with anxieties of what will happen here, what will happen here, what will happen here. You know, here's what he says. He says, don't let your life be filled with anxieties, but what should we? But in everything. So here's the contrast. Watch the contrast. So instead of letting your life be filled with anxiety, let it be filled with prayer and praise. If you fill your life, my friend, with, with praying to the God of heaven and praising him for the great things that he has done, what's going to happen is it's going to keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Christ is the very vehicle that takes us to this peace. And so while I'm thinking of him, I'm thinking of the goodness of God. A guarded thought life. I've got to, I've got to, you've got to, we've got to as Christians in this day in society, we've got to guard our thoughts Guard what comes in to our minds. Guard what comes into our eyes. Guard what comes into our ears. Guard what we allow to ponder in our heart. We have got to make sure that we guard ourselves against the wicked and evils of this world. That's number two. Or number one. Here's number two. A guided thought life. A guided thought life. See, we're to guard what we bring in. But watch this. He says in verse number Eight, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are, and he gives a list, and then he says, think on these things. So here's what I need to do. I need to guide my thoughts and guide my thinking to the things that are right. You know that uh, as humans, one of the, one of the uh, I guess it's a blessing really, uh, is that you can't think of two things at one time. Oh, now we might be able to think about a lot of stuff, you know, but not at one time. If I'm thinking about, you know, okay, here's what I'm making for dinner. I'm thinking about that, okay? And I'm putting those plans together. Now, some other thought may come into my mind and distract me or, or so have it. But, but I can't be thinking about something else while I'm thinking about that. If I'm thinking about something good, I can't be thinking about something bad. But if I'm thinking about something bad, I can't be thinking about something good. And here's, this is what, what Christ is teaching his people uh, here in the book of Philippians. He's teaching them. We need to guide our thoughts to those things that are right. Now, let me just give you a couple things here. I'm just going to uh, go down through this list. He says, he says those things that are true. So, so whatever is true, I need to think on those things. So, so don't drown yourself in the lies of the media don't drown your thinking with the false religions of the world. Don't drown yourself in social media and the lies that are being put around. You know, if you tried to fact check everything in the world, I'm going to tell you what, you'd have a full-time job. In fact, there's people that have full-time jobs just fact checking everything. You know, when people, when people, I heard an old, an old uh, preacher talk about this back in his early days when he was a younger man. Uh, and he was uh, working in a bank talking about counterfeit bills and things like that. He said there were so many counterfeit bills out there, there's no way you could, you could get a hold of all of them and study every counterfeit bill and every counterfeiting technique. He said, but what we were taught to do on the downtimes of the hours is just get, get used to the real money. Just, just get used to the real, play with the real money, touch the real money, smell the real money, put it in your fingers and look at it and study that real money. So if you, get, if you get an idea of what the genuine is and spend enough time with that which is true, when something false comes along, you won't accept it. And that's exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. We need to think on what is true. Think about the scripture. Think about the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he left heaven and came here to save us. Think about all the, the, the great truths that are in this Bible uh, that lead us and guide us and protect us. Listen, we need to think of the truth of God's word. And my friend, listen, whenever it comes up, uh, questions like, hey, who am I going to vote for in the upcoming election? Well, it's not real hard. I can look at two candidates and I can see what this one stands for and if and I can see what this one stands for and if what this one is standing for on a public platform goes against the word of God then I cannot vote for that individual you see what I'm saying I'm making a choice 
Same way with watch entertainment. You talk about entertainment coming in. Uh, if, if, uh, if this entertainment goes against the word of God, then I shouldn't do it. So you, 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 you find yourself surrounded with truth. Then when error presents itself, it'll be easy to make that choice. He says whatsoever things are true. And then he says whatsoever things are honest. That word honest is honorable or worthy of honor. You know, it pretty much excludes most of the daytime talk shows that are on television because that's not honorable. TV and radio programs, listen, all the things that appeal uh, to the lower nature of man, he's saying avoid those things that are not honorable and not honest. And my friend, we need to do well to think on those things that are honest. He then says what sort of things are just. That word just is talking about righteousness or those things which are right. Don't dwell on what isn't right and all the world turmoil, and this is bad, and this is bad over here, and this is bad over here, and I don't know what we're going to do about this, and I don't know what we're going to do about this, and I don't know when we're going to start this again, and I don't know when this is going to happen. And Man, we may never. We just heard today uh, that our uh, Dutch Days Festival, that's, that's closed down. Uh, you know, that was always a big witnessing opportunity for our church, and they're not going to have it up here in the square town. They had moved it up into, I think it was September, but they're still not going to have that. Man, that, that was discouraging. I'm thinking, man, now we're not going to be able to do that. Hey, listen, Instead of thinking about what's not right and what's not good, let's think about what is good. Guess what? We're going to preach the gospel this, uh, tonight. We're going to preach the gospel on Sunday morning. We're going to preach the gospel uh, on Sunday night. We're going to continue to pass out gospel tracts. God's still on the throne. Heaven is still real. Hell is still hot. God still answers prayer. The Holy Spirit is still working. Hey, I can think of a whole lot of things that are still good. Amen. I don't have to worry about what's not right. Think about the things that are right. Find what is right and good and think on those things. He says, whatsoever things are pure. I need to guide my thoughts into that which is pure. Literally, the, the word means to be clean, innocent, modest. This world is a dirty, filthy world, a very sensual world. T today in our society, listen very carefully, you will see more nudity, more sexual innuendos and, and more uh, uh, homosexuality. They, they slip that in the commercials. You'll see more of that in, in one commercial than I saw in all of TV in my growing up at, at home. I'm telling you, listen, they, they put this stuff in everywhere. They've got whole TV shows, whole, you know, programs, and I don't watch any of that junk, so I don't know all of what it is. I see uh, things from, on the news from time to time and, and get emails about it. But, man, it's so wicked that the stuff that's going on out there, and people are making millions of dollars off the wickedness of sin. He says, no, you find what is pure, clean, innocent, modest. Those are the things that we think about. My friend, listen, don't fill your mind with the things of the world, the, the lust and the pornography, and don't fill your mind with, with all, I've got to have this, and I've got to have more, and I've got to have a bigger house, and I've got to have a bigger, I need more of these, and I need more of these. My friend, that's not pure. The lust of our heart, the pride of life gets a hold of all of us from time to time. My friend, think about those things that are pure. Then he says, think about those things that are lovely. The word lovely means to be friendly, kind, and gracious. Literally, think on the things that are beautiful. Think on the things that, that add to our beauty. Think about the hymns. Uh, man, I'll tell you what, when I think about some of the hymns that we sing about the blood of Christ, the atonement, I think, of, I think about uh, the beautiful things, those lovely things of the Word of God, those lovely truths of how the Lord Jesus Christ saves old sinners. Gives them eternal life. Amen. God can take a sinful man out of a sinful world, save him, put him back in that sinful world, and keep him saved and holy until the day of uh, judgment. I thank God for the pure and lovely things of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about the scriptures. Think about the love of God. Think about the blessings that God has given you and your family. These are lovely things. Then he says, think of things that are good report. Those things that are reputable, have a good reputation, a good report, a good testimony, well spoken of. Those things. So he's talking about not only think about those things that, that are good, but will lead to that which is good. The idea of this, of this think about uh, things that are of a good report, 
It's things that will build you, things that will stretch the mind into more godliness and, and, and allow you to think more. Oftentimes our conversation uh, becomes idle and just idle chit-chat, and it can even turn into gossip and slander. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of times you get to talking about something, then you get talking about someone, then you get to tearing them down and run them down. Hey, listen, let your conversations, let everything be built up. Think about the good things of God. The Bible gives us this list here of guided thoughts. Are you guiding your thoughts through the day? Or is it just like whatever comes up, oh, I'm going to think about that. Oh, I'm going to think about that. I'm going to think about that. Let your mind, listen, keep that mind. Guard that mind. And then guide that mind to, to think about the right things. If you want the peace of God, it's going to take some work. It's going to take work. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take discipline in me. I need to keep focused on him and what is right. We need to guard our thoughts, and we need to guide those thoughts. But then the last thing, I want to look at this. If we're going to have peace, we've got to have a, a get-it-done type attitude, a get-it-done type attitude, a go-get-it type attitude. Look at what he says in verse 9. Paul says, those things which ye have both, now watch this, learned and received and heard and seen in me do what's he saying he says look i've provided you an example i've taught you these things you've received them and said yes that is right you've heard it from my mouth you've seen it in my actions here's what he says we need to be doing the things that god says are right you see, it's one thing to say, okay, uh, I agree that this is right, but I need to do that which is right. He says all of the things that we know are right to do, we must do it. It takes discipline. It takes discipline. Listen, our thoughts direct our actions. And Paul said here in this passage of Scripture, he said we need to do what we've been taught. Christianity is not a spectator sport. My friend, it's It's active. It's active. And our thoughts are going to affect our behavior. And we have got to start guarding and guiding what we think about and then doing those things that we know is right. And listen, all of these things, listen, he says in this verse, before he ever goes to verse number eight and says, whatever's true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good, where do we get that good attitude? He ended verse number seven with two words, Christ Jesus. Whenever the Apostle Paul said, you've seen it in me, where did he learn it? In Jesus Christ. I can tell you everything about Jesus is true. Everything about Jesus is honest. Everything about Jesus is pure and lovely and good and just and of a good report. Everything about these things, listen, all of this character is coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's what we do. I can't do that in myself. My flesh would lead me the wrong way. But through Christ, through him, through his power, I can do those things and think on those things. And through him, I can have peace. He'll keep my heart. He'll keep my mind. He'll protect me if I'm doing those things that I need to be doing. My friend, I cannot go out here and put, uh, put water in a, in a gasoline engine in the gas tank and expect it to run. I can't do that. That would be a foolish action. I cannot sit at home and, and think about ungodly things. I cannot fill my mind and my heart and my radio and my television with ungodly and moral things and think that, okay, now I need to think about Jesus when it comes time to come to church. Or now when there's a problem in my life, oh, I'm going go, to go pray and see what God has to say about it. No, you have filled your whole week with trash. And now you try to go pull out a pure thought or a true thought or a kind thought or, or a good report thought. And guess what? You can't do it. And that's why so many Christians are making so many bad decisions is because we're filling our minds and our hearts with all kinds of ungodly thoughts. And then whenever we go to get those good thoughts and make a good decision, we can't do it. Listen, if we want peace, that peace has got to come through Jesus Christ only. We need to keep the course, stay the course, don't give up, and don't quit. My friend, tonight, if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you're hearing this message for the first time, I want you to know that all are sinners and we all come short of the glory of God. Our flesh is, is fragile, our flesh fails, and we need Him to make it work. And I'm asking you, friend, if you would acknowledge your sin before a holy God 
and you would acknowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you will by faith receive Christ as your personal Savior, he will bring peace into your life. That, that sin and guilt and shame, he'll remove and put peace in its place. My friend, right now you can pray and say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I'm asking you to be my Savior and take me to heaven. Cleanse me, Lord. Why don't you pray that from your heart right now? Christians, let's pray so that we can have peace in our hearts. Father, we love you. We thank you for the word you give us. Thank you for the truth of your word. Help us to stay the course. Help us to focus upon you and help us to, to guard our thoughts and to guide our thoughts. And Lord, that we would have a get it done attitude. Lord, we love you. We can't do it without you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I love you, and I'm praying for you. I'll see you Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. service, and then a 10.30 a.m. service. Pick one and be in God's house. God bless you.